This is on 101 series, we are in part 3, and as I promised, I would like to show you how you can add or remove columns into the SharePoint list using C Sharp and client side object model. We start by deleting the column from SharePoint list because it's much easier, and then I will show you how you can add column to a SharePoint list. To delete a column from the SharePoint list, we need to get a reference to the web. Inside the web, we have the lists collection that includes all the lists in the website. So inside it, we can locate a list and we have a fields collection that includes a couple of fields inside it, of course. All we need to do, we need to locate a field and call the delete object. We get the reference to the web. Locate the list. Locate the field. Call delete object and call execute query. Let's see how it works. I go to Visual Studio and I create a new project. I want it to be of type Windows Forms application. I call it CSUM 101 Part 3. As always, I add reference to Microsoft.SharePoint.Client.Runtime and Microsoft.SharePoint.Client. I click OK and my form is here. I just need to add a button and I call it Delete I double click on it, I'm on the source code on the top of the page, I add using Microsoft.SharePoint.Client and then I go back to my code, I need to resolve this form conflict, so I would say this is a Windows form, not a SharePoint form, and using client context ctx equals new client context and I need the site URL. So this is the website that I have. In this website I have a list called products and the field that I'm going to delete is called expiry date. So I get the URL to this website, paste. So the first thing that I would like to do is ctx is getting the reference to the web, so web my web equals ctx dot web. Then I get the reference to the list, list my list equals my web dot lists dot get by title. And if you can remember, it was products. And now reference to the field my field equals my list dot fields dot get by title it was expiry date let's double check yep and all I need to do my field dot delete object and ctx.execute query to pass all the requests to the SharePoint server. And finally, message box.show column deleted. Let me run it and see how it works. I click on it and it tells me column deleted. And I go to the page, refresh, and verify that the column is gone. Now let's see how we can add columns to the SharePoint list. Again, we have the web object inside which we have lists. So we pick up a list and we have the fields collection, just like any collection we call the add method. But here, because it's a field and we know field has its definition or its schema in XML, we can simply call add field as XML. So we can create a field in one shot without any additional manipulation. So let's review. We get the reference to the web. We get a reference to the list, we call the add field as XML, we call execute query, and then we are done. Let's see how it is done. So I go back to Visual Studio, I go to the forms, and I go to the toolbox, I add another button, and I call it add column. And I double click on it. Imagine I would like to add the column that I just deleted. 
so the first thing that I need to do I need to get a reference to the website so web my web equals cdx.web list my list equals my web dot lists dot get my title and that's going to be products then I would say my list dot fields dot add field as XML and now we need to have the XML definition for this field that I will add it whether you want to add this field to the default view I would say true and finally add field options I would say use the default value and the last step is ctx dot execute query and showing my message box column created okay now I need to have definition for this function for that I simply go to I go to Google and I search for SharePoint field XML schema for example for field date I can find it here hopefully in one of the examples uh, yep this field is date date time so I can copy it and I can bring it to Visual Studio for editing I go back to my Visual Studio I always use the XML designer here so if I create an XML file and I click open I just paste the field definition in this in this XML editor okay for this field I don't need the ID the name is going to be expiry date display name is going to be expiry date type daytime is okay format is going to be date only it is not required and I don't want to specify groups because I don't have group here now to make my life a whole lot easier I just replace any double code with single code replace all I just copy this piece bring it back to my form add sign and I just paste it here as simple as that let's style it a little bit so it looks better as simple as that I can create a column so let me just run it add column column created and if I go back to my SharePoint click on products you see the expiry date is added and if I say add new item you see it takes a default value for today thank you for watching if you found this video useful please like it make sure you subscribe so you stay tuned for the future videos have a wonderful day